Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus again today for episode three of three, it's a short series, in our series on hunger. Now, so far we've talked about what happens when you eat, we've talked about what happens when you don't eat. Today, we're gonna talk about maybe a way that you don't need to eat anymore, you know, if you don't like it. Make sure you subscribe so you get all the episodes of DNews Plus. Go back and watch the first two episodes if you haven't already. We would love that. And please, please subscribe to the show so we can keep making it. So, last episode we talked about what happens if we stop eating food, how our body reacts. Going into a starvation mode and eating up available resources throughout the body like fat and muscles and the immune system and all sorts of other crazy stuff. Make sure you go back again if you haven't. But how long can we last like this? How long could we be in starvation mode? I mean, there's no official number because it depends on the environment, the amount of fat that you had when you started. It depends on access to water because that's very important outside of need for food. Initial health of the person who is starving. So survival time can vary and it's super unethical for scientists to study this in an empirical way where they just starve a bunch of people and watch them, right? That's not cool. So data has been taken from patients in vegetative states once patients are taken off of artificial sustenance. They stay alive usually about 10 to 12 days. Gandhi, however, lasted 21 days of total starvation, only taking sips of water, and hunger strikers have been documented at surviving 28, 36, 38, and 40 days without eating. Recently, a Palestinian prisoner ended a 94-day hunger strike drinking water and was given nutrient supplements for a couple of days in the middle of his strike. 94 days with just water and some nutrient supplements. I mean, that itself sounds torturous. I'm sure you're wondering about how long we can live without water. Water needs to be replaced constantly. We're, we're using it all the time. Our organs won't work properly. Our blood literally gets thicker and sludgy. It's not good. It also keeps our body temperature down. So three to five days without water. Not very many. But when it comes to fasting, or diets, or if you're in an extreme situation, make sure to stay hydrated. But maybe you just don't like to eat, you know? The guy who works here, his name's Jared, he doesn't like to eat. Maybe you've seen him on D News before, also known as Helper Boy. There is an alternative world where humans can stop eating, you know, in the future, in fiction. But they still have a functioning body. Is that something that we can get here in the real lives? There is a group that claims that they can live off prana which is a Sanskrit word for life air, breatharians. Basically, they just feel they don't need food or water. They just breathe. So new followers who are breatharians are told to first become a vegetarian, then convert to vegan, then convert to raw food, then convert to liquid only. And finally, once you've pared down your liquid food enough, you should just be able to ingest air and you live forever or whatever. Air and light from the sun fuels your body, they say, and gives you nutrients. Though some breatharians have said they do put food in their mouth, you know, just for taste. Because air is probably pretty bland after a while. We can't live off air, guys. That's not a real thing. I'm just saying, we can't. Multiple breatharians have died trying to do this because they starve themselves to death. Go back and listen to what happens when you starve yourself to death. You do not want to try this. One of the principal things on this thinking is the belief that we can sustain on light, but we're not plants, we don't have chlorophyll, we cannot photosynthesize energy. Plants take that sunlight and that's what they do. Humans can't do that. One doctor was quoted in an article and said, it's delusional to think you can escape the laws of biology. That's a quote. It's possible to survive for longer periods without food though. Just not on breath, okay? As we went over, your body needs to ingest something because it builds cells, it fulfills all of the needs and the nutrients in your body or it's gonna start eating itself to find those nutrients. But something doesn't necessarily need to be food. One computer engineer had the same question, could you sustain without food on something else? Rob Reinhart was his name. And obviously you learned earlier that you need all of these things to eat. So the guy came up with a food alternative called Soylent. Yeah, he's in on the joke, he made it up. You still have to eat it, but it's not necessarily food. Reinhardt started to think of the body as a machine and broke down the things that the body needed to intake in order to make sure that the machine operates. Kind of like a car. A car needs fuel in order to function in the same way that the human body does. So he studied physiology and nutrition and biology and came up with this substance that he says is the perfect substance to be a new fuel. 
So first, he started experimenting with his own body, he used trial and error, and added magnesium and electrolytes and potassium, and every time he changed it, it got a little different result. Some gave him more energy, some made him sick. Food is very delicate balance. It's something we've evolved to enjoy over the last two million years or so, and at the end, his final product had 39 different ingredients, vitamins, minerals, olive oil, fish oil, carbohydrates, probiotics, antioxidants, all in a liquid form. It's actually a powdered form, and then you drink it by mixing it with water. He claims that it works. He lost weight, he got in better shape, he said his dandruff cleared up. We've actually tried it at D News before. Uh, it tastes weird, kind of like cake batter but this was a few years ago, so it's gotten better, hopefully. There are skeptics who aren't sure that this is proof that your body will be getting everything it needs, that this mixture isn't something we would normally get. Maybe there's a disease that this wouldn't give us the building blocks to fight. We're not really sure. People began to try it, and one writer tried living off it for a whole month. We only tried a week, and people were like, hangry all the time, guys, all the time. People were mad all the time, it was crazy. But the writer concluded that yeah, it made him feel fine. But not eating affected him socially. It's hard to walk around, meet friends, you don't meet for a meal because you don't eat. In a world that ate real food, this guy felt like an outcast. We like variety in what we eat and variety in our flavors. Soylent doesn't have those things either. You just drink a shake all day. Again, tastes like cake batter and fish, which is weird. But this is a cheaper way to eat, a cheaper way to keep our bodies running properly, and maybe it's a solution for places where food is scarce or where food is difficult to get, and where starvation is an actual threat. They can send Soylent in and potentially help those people out. The idea is nothing new. I mean, look at like futuristic television shows, cartoons, and movies from the 40s and 50s. People would eat a pill and they would be okay for the day. That's sort of the promise of something like this. But people who are doing this because they have to, that's not really the same, right? Hospitals, they make sure that you eat. There are different types of diet shakes. There are all sorts of different ways that you can ingest calories and nutrients without eating food, but eventually, you might still need to have a meal of some kind. Even the guy who invented Soylent admits that sometimes he does eat. Because it's not really a food replacement. He says sometimes he does like to eat socially, but he doesn't do it all the time. Our body still needs nutrients. And if that means eating, you know, steak and potatoes or broccoli and cheese or whatever it is, we need to do something. There's no magical pill or breathable vapor or light source that can deliver all of these nutrients into our body like food can. And if we don't eat, our own body starts to eat us, which is kind of crazy. We hope you enjoyed this short series on hunger. Let us know down in the comments if you have ideas for future series, what you thought of the hunger series. Have you ever tried Soylent? Have you ever tried it? Let us know about that too. And also, make sure you come find us on Twitter. I'm at Trace Dominguez, and the show is at DNews. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time on D News Plus.